In today's video, I have a really simple geometry notes set up for you. So we're going to be making this looping animation in Blender. And you can do this if you're a complete beginner. I will explain absolutely everything. So if you just look at the render I made, we first need to model some of the parts. So I had a block, I had a cylinder, I had a hollow block and a hollow cylinder. So first I'm just going to delete the default cube and then I'm going to save my file. And this file will be available on my Patreon, so you can go over there and download it. So let's just make the parts. So I'm going to add in a nice cube and I'm just going to um, move it by one meter up. So the origin is at the bottom and then just kind of make it a little bit longer uh, by three meters. So it's five by two by two meters. I am going to keep all of my objects the same width and uh, depth, so 2 meters by 2 meters. Uh, it would be easier if you have uniform uh, thickness or width. Height doesn't really matter though. Alright, so now I'm going to uh, just duplicate this by pressing Shift D and moving it to the side and making a hollow version. You can make any objects that you want, but this is just what I'm going to do. I'm also going to add in a small little bevel to all of these just to make it a little bit more smooth. That's great. We can just select these and give them a appropriate name. So this is the cube. I'm also going to select everything. Hit M on my keyboard to make a new collection. Then click new collection and call this uh, objects or something. We will be using this collection in the geometry notes later. So uh, yeah, that's why we are making it. Uh, then to actually make the geometry notes, I'm going to add in an object. It doesn't really matter what it is. It just needs to be able to get a geometry notes modifier. We can delete all the vertices just so we have an empty object. I'm also going to hide the objects collection. Then I'm going to open up my geometry node editor and add in a new geometry node setup. Just zooming in here. I'm going to call this a loop. Uh, what I want to do is kind of instance our objects on a plane and then moving that plane and the instances on there uh, in a looping pattern. So first to make that plane, we need to add a, a grid node. You can add nodes by pressing Shift A and then just search for it in the search bar here. You can also find them in a the menu, but it's generally just much quicker if you just search for it. All right, if we hit Control Shift left mouse button, we will see a plane here, one by one meters. We can increase this however we want. I'm going to go for something like 10. So we can fit a couple of our objects on there. And then the vertices, you're not really going to be able to see, but they are there. there. So for example, if we want to divide our 10 by 10 meter plane into parts of uh, two meters each, we need five vertices because um, 10 divided by five is two. Now we have a place for our objects. And I can also just show you with the following step. We want to do mesh to points. So basically all those vertices we made, as you can see here, will be turned into points, which is just a data point. It's just a location that you tell the computer to keep in mind. The radius doesn't really matter, it's just for visibility. So you can make it however big you want if you cannot see them. And as you can see now, I messed up a little bit because we need six vertices for two by two meters. The reason for that is because of course, I was thinking about edges. For an edge you need two vertices, so now it works. And now basically the idea is to grab one of our objects, like this cube here, and kind of place it on one of these points. So for example here, on this one, and then moving it up and down depending on a value. So first we need to kind of instance our objects on those points. For that we can just search for an instance on points node and place it on here. So the points go into the points and now you will see nothing because we need our instances. So for example if I were to add in a cube here, you can set this as an instance and you will see what happens. But we want to use our custom objects so to do that we need to load them into the geometry nodes editor. And to do that, we need to add in a collection node, collection info, search for your collection. For us, that's objects. Make sure it's on original and separate children. So we can only pick one of the objects. If we put this into the instance, you will see a lot of things happening and not necessarily what we want to happen because we still need to pick an instance, which basically just uh, just randomly picks one of those. So that's why we needed to separate children. Otherwise this wouldn't work, as you can see. And we also need to reset the location of these because I laid them out to show you guys, but uh, they need to be in the, yeah, the origin of the world. 
So to easily reset these, just select everything and press Alt G. This will reset the location. Now back in the plane, if we preview it, it looks like this. It's still really uniform, so we need to fix that. We can do that by uh, this instance index, which is the value that will pick the instance. For now, it's just based on based on the number of the index it is. So it will be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So we'll al always pick the same ones, but we can drag out of this and search for a random value. And this will randomize this. You can set the C to whatever you want or the maximum to whatever you want. Just make sure it's above the amount of objects you have. Otherwise it will not work. So if I set it to one, it will only pick two of these because it uh, starts with zero. So that's also an object, uh, but anything above three is uh, pretty unnecessary, but it does also doesn't matter. So whatever with the seed, you can control the seed. Of course, it will randomize it further. And that's about it. So now we have our objects instanced. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that they're touching perfectly, which I don't really like. So I'm going to scale it here as well, by 0.95 or something, just a really tiny amount, just so uh, there's a little bit of breathing room. All right, so uh, that's it for instancing. Now we just need to move these up and down and make it loop. Well, to make it loop, you, you can watch one of my previous videos. I will explain it in depth there, but I'm also going to explain it here, so don't worry. So let's just uh, do that. So what we need to do is move the points because if we move the instances, they will all move at the same time, which is not really what we want. You can probably do this if you have a realized instance node, but it's not necessary, so we're not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to search for a set position node, which will basically just um, yeah, set the position based on a value. This is a factor value, so you have three different values. We can move by Y, by X, and by Z. And we are going to control the Z movement with a noise texture. So to only move uh, one of these three, we need to drag off this offset and search for a combine X, Y, Z. And now we can separately input values in here. So basically we're not going to touch the X and Y, we're just going to use the Z. For the value, we can just use a wave texture, which loops really nicely without much effort. You can just plug that into the Z axis and we can play with the phase offset. You can already see it animating, and this is also a really cool effect if you want this, but I'm going to make it uh, more randomized. So to make it more random, you can increase the detail roughness and then the detail. And then the most important part is the distortion. Just set that to something like 200. And now you will see if I play with the phase offset, it's really randomized and smooth. And that's basically everything we need to do. If you want, you can add in a multiply node or a uh, math node, I mean, and set this to multiply and then increase or decrease the amount of movement that you get. For me, uh, this default one is uh, fine. So we're just going to do that. If you want to have more of these, you can just increase the size by uh, about 50 and then set the vertices to 26. So basically uh, what I did before, uh, 10 divided by 5 and then plus 1 because you need the edge one as well and that's basically it we can just hit shift a add in a camera and then go back into the plane and make sure that our instance on point is going into the group output so we're also going to see that and now we need a timeline to animate this decide how many frames you want so for me i want 120 frames Go to frame zero and hit a keyframe for phase offset. And then on 120, uh, we want to use the value two times pi. For a detailed explanation, you can go over to the previous video and watch the explanation there. But this basically, uh, two pi basically just loops the wave texture. And now we, can, uh, now we can also just set this to linear and now it will loop perfectly. As you can see. All right, now for rendering. We want to go over to cycles because that's a lot prettier. Add in some lights, whatever you want, something like this. Really nice 
uh, from the top lighting. And then I'm also going to add in a shader called his blocks and just make a really simple shader. So you can give this a kind of red color and make sure this is on your objects, of course. I was on the plane. Then to give this a different uh, color on every single object you have here, we can add in a object info node and then use the random color I like this. And then just add in a use saturation and value node, copy over your color, just hover over this, hit control C and then control V and then put the random into the factor. Uh, so we can use these gradients as a kind of mix value between the operations and the color we have here. If I now set this to the base color and play with the saturation, for example, you can see some are less saturated. You can also play with the U, but I generally try to avoid that or make it really subtle. And then you're left with something like this, which looks really cool. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, as always, this file will be available on my Patreon, so you can support me on there. If you want me to make a video about something, just leave a comment and I'll do that for you. And also join the Discord because we're doing a random challenge in a couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that. I'll see you then. Uh, goodbye.